I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I wanna to tackle the question of do you need a VPN for security as an expat, as a digital nomad, as someone who's traveling, and this may apply to you just at home as well, even if you're not a traveler, do you need a VPN to keep yourself safe? People talk about this all the time and if you were just watching influencers on YouTube, you're definitely gonna be convinced that all of them are living and dying by having a VPN. And I see everybody talking about this and there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of sales pitches out of there. So I wanna go over some real details and explain when you do and when you don't need a VPN as an expat, a digital nomad. So let's start with some basic things up front. VPNs are just a tool. They're like a hammer or a screwdriver. They're not inherently good or bad on their own. So that's that's a starting point. And when people talk about VPNs, it depends on the context that they're talking in. I just stepped into the shadows. They can be talking about them in all kinds of different contexts and mean very different things. As a technology tool, VPNs are a very general purpose thing and they exist all over the place and you don't realize that you're using them every day. Uh, and so often people think that they need to buy a VPN from a VPN vendor and they don't know that they're using a VPN already. They don't know that VPNs are part of other things. They don't recognize which things are, like they just everything about VPNs gets very confusing. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the technology at the end. So for those of you who are interested, you can stick around for that. But most of you don't care, you wanna know the answer answers to this. So we're actually going to get to that first because we want to be kind of useful. But I do work in this space and I am a security and technology consultant to businesses about this all the time. So VPNs are something I've been an expert in since the 90s. Uh, so this is not a new thing. This is not a thing that is unique to travelers, to laptop users or anything like that. VPNs are a core of uh, core technology used in all kinds of things in business and everyday life. But 99% of the time we use them without knowing. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. All these countless people that you see online telling you you need a VPN, they're not out trying to take advantage of you. They're just getting paid to sell something that to them sounds good too, and they're not really thinking about it. And I'm not saying it's bad. So let's start with when you actually would want a VPN. What really specific thing actually pretty much justifies it for most expats and digital nomads and just travelers in general. Certain types of VPN vendors provide a service that allows you to obfuscate your real location of your computer and appear like you're coming from a completely different place. And this is a useful technology when you're using Netflix or something like that and you're trying to get around the rules and use it in a different location than you really are. Generally, this means you're breaking your terms of service. You don't normally get in trouble for it. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do it, but it's important to understand that the primary use case for using a VPN, the primary valuable use case that actually makes sense is one where you're doing something against your contract terms. So that from a fundamental point means that VPNs are not truly a security mechanism, they're an anti-security mechanism. That's actually the starting point for VPNs in general. Their general functionality in most use cases is to work around security, not to provide security. And the vendors who are providing this for you are primarily making this product and offering this product and, and staking its value on doing something fundamentally insecure for someone else and doing something that's not illegal in most cases, but is breaking rules that the customer has agreed to. So that makes for an interesting relationship and then trusting that vendor to be your security vendor who's going to protect you in other situations, it's a pretty weird thing to think. Much of the hype beyond that, if you are going to use a VPN in that way, and let's face it, we all do, then that's fine. And it, and it generally works pretty well and that can justify why you have it. So that can make sense. And if that's the whole discussion, well, I want it because I want to appear like I'm coming from another country and I want to be able to watch shows from a different jurisdiction and I don't agree with, with my location locks or the contracts that I have and I'm, you know, that's what I want to do, that's absolutely fine. And, and if that's what justifies it for you, good, you're all set. 
If you are getting the hype from most people though, they're gonna tell you that there is security reasons that you need a VPN to keep yourself safe. And I ask you to really dig into that and ask what exactly is the VPN protecting against that is not already protected against. A long time ago, 15 years, maybe to 20 years ago, there was a time when people were starting to get online, it was relatively new, and there was this movement for people to start offering public Wi-Fi. And at that time, there were some real problems where you had uh, the Wi-Fi was insecure, people's browsers were insecure, their computers were insecure, people didn't have firewalls, they didn't have antivirus, they didn't know to have passwords and lock things down, they ran Windows 98, all kinds of crazy things that left you 100% exposed and anybody could get on the network was going to just get into your computer and anything you put on the internet, people could read. Uh, people didn't have secure websites or anything like that. So it was a different world. They could do all kinds of nasty things. So that was the world 20 years ago, 15 years ago that we had, and it was a real problem and we needed to do something about it. And at the time, people came up with the concept of taking this tool called a VPN, and this was real, and using that to connect from some public location, which could be a cafe, it could be an office, it could be your home, it could be anything, and taking all of your internet traffic and sending it off to a trusted company, this is key, you gotta trust that company because they're getting every single detail about you. And then having them send out all your information and hopefully their communications are secure. However, their communications weren't really secure, so it gave in many cases a false sense of security, but it did improve your security over what it was, but it didn't make you secure it just made it a little bit better. And this solved a lot of actual real world problems. People sitting in a cafe couldn't just track what you were doing and see what websites you were going to, see what you were doing on those websites, interact with your session. They couldn't get your passwords. So it did a lot of really important stuff. And it really did take people from being ridiculously insecure to being reasonably secure. And so people got this idea and it got into the social consciousness that VPNs were this thing for solving a problem. But we had had VPNs for a long time and they were not a security solution per se. This was a new, it hit the public and suddenly normal people who didn't work in technology were being introduced to this word VPN and a lot of assumptions were being connected with it. This is one very specific use case of a VPN and it was a good one, but it was the first one that the public had ever seen and people start as they always do to associate a lot of things either as like, well, this is what VPN meant that one time, so it must always mean that, which is not the case, or just whatever, right? They start to imagine VPN as something that it isn't. And that makes it really easy to trick people into buying it in the future because they don't know what they're buying. They just know that they needed it at some point in the past. Well, if you need it in the past, it's reasonable you're gonna need it in the future, right? Well, it does, it's not unreasonable, but it doesn't lead one thing from to another. The world has moved on, especially all those technologies were super nascent at the time, and now they're very mature. So the world is very, very different than it was when VPNs were used for security in those cases. Since that time, a number of important things have changed. One is that Wi-Fi security is a million times better. Like it's actually decently secure. We've also moved on and we don't care if our Wi-Fi is secure. We know when we first started putting people online, people were connected through dial-up connections and stuff. You had a hard wire going from wherever you were to wherever you needed to talk to someone. And in doing that, made it relatively easy to stay secure. Well, who's gonna see my communications? It's all on this wire, not up there. But when we first put in Wi-Fi, especially in public spaces, suddenly our stuff was being broadcast and everyone in the room could see it. No one thought about it. So then, Yes, we could lock down the Wi-Fi, but that can't be trusted. Even if you should do it, it doesn't mean you can trust it. It's just good to do as an extra measure. What we really gotta do is make the things we're doing fundamentally secure. And that is what has changed over the years. All those things that used to be insecure are now very secure in many different ways. And there's lots of tools to make it even safer yet. So let's talk about a few of those. We used to worry about people getting our passwords because our websites were unencrypted. What they actually did under the hood, and this technology already existed, but people weren't 
using it ubiquitously and a lot of end users were like, oh, I don't care if it's secure and they would bypass it or they didn't take security seriously enough to look up how to use it properly. And so they were missing that something may have been optionally secure and they were opting out of it through the way that they're interacting with the website. So that is something that vendors like Google and Apple and Microsoft and Mozilla, they pushed really hard to make that problem go away. And that problem did go away. Basically all sites today actually implement a private VPN every time you go to their website, directly from you to them to protect everything that you're doing, every password, every everything, and it's all in your browser, right? You should take, if you are not computer literate enough to be aware and familiar with the little codes that come up in your browser that tell you when a website is secure, when it's past its checks, that you get the little green lock, depending on which browser you're in, then that's something you need to take a little bit of time to learn for your specific browser or browsers because that's something you have to know. It's basic computer literacy. You cannot be safe without that. It doesn't matter what anyone does for you. If that isn't there, no VPN is gonna fix that problem. So you have to make sure of that. But most people have that happen basically all the time. So it's not a major issue. This is actually quite simple to deal with. So as long as you're going to proper websites, they're going to take care of you and you don't have to worry that your communications with them is going to be hijacked or someone can see it or whatever. That's not the case. So you're automatically safer than that VPN ever was uh, just by normal use of a computer. And, and the reason it's more secure is that one, there's an individual private connection, a VPN, it really is a VPN under the hood. People who don't study this have no idea. Even people who work in the field are often like, wait, that's a VPN? Yeah, it totally is. Uh, it's a private VPN for every website you go to, for every browser tab to every window, uh, to every website that you go to is another VPN. And that means that even there's no single company that can snoop between them. Even Google can't go in and see what you're doing between all those websites. So you're really, really protected. Whereas back with the VPN approach, all of your traffic went to one company. So there was a single company. There's lots of different ones that did it, but you would have one company that had all your data and they weren't a very big company normally. And you had to trust them with all of your data. And they would know everything about you, every website you go to, how long you were there, what you sent. Like that's pretty scary that a single company has all that data. That's way more than just, I went to the cafe and someone snooped on me. You've got a company that's snooping on everything. And I don't know of any case where those companies actually use that data against anyone, but they sure could have. They had a lot of extortion power. So that was actually a big security vulnerability, even with the VPN, and that has gone away. Now your communications is private to the company you're talking to, so instead of one big shared VPN, you have an individual private end-to-end -end communication, and you also have an end-to-end. -end. So let's talk about that. It used to be when you had to use a VPN that you would encrypt your data between you and the VPN vendor. Well, that's just the first piece. The traffic between the VPN vendor and whoever you were talking to, your bank, your friend, whatever, was not encrypted, that was, that was wide open. When you got a VPN, you were told your traffic's encrypted, but if the other person isn't encrypting it too, then it isn't, and so it wasn't. And so yes, it's more safe because your portion of it is safe, but there's still this unsafe portion going on out there, but that has gone away now. So when you talk to, you go to your bank's website, you go to HTTPS, and it comes up and it gives you the little green lock or whatever that says everything's good, you and your bank are now talking directly to each other and it's secure the whole way. That's wildly different than those old VPNs. So the level of security from that thing alone is so leaps and bounds ahead of anything that was there before, that that is what's super important. On top of that, we also had the fear that every time you went to a website, you would, it's called a DNS call. And this would, you'd put in, you know, mybank.com and the system would go out and say, where's mybank.com? And anyone who's watching your system would see unencrypted that you were trying to find mybank.com. They wouldn't know your password. They didn't know how you got there. They don't know what you did there, but they know that that's somewhere you went. So they would learn something about you. And learning those things about you can be valuable to someone who's trying to hurt you. Not, it's not necessarily the most valuable thing, but it is a real point of risk. So hiding that or obfuscating that are things that are valuable and people who are worried about security do want to do. So we want to be able to do that, but does it make sense? So again, in the years since that original problem, this has also been tackled. This was tackled later. So this is more relatively new that it's not a big concern uh, or as much a concern. 
But the way this has been tackled is that certain browsers, like Firefox, are starting to do non-DNS calls. They're actually establishing a VPN to a secure vendor and doing those calls that way so that it never goes out over the public. The people in the cafe with you, they can't see even that. There's no server that can figure out what's going on. Now, some people bypass that, some people disable it, but that's disabling security. You can always, if you had a VPN and turned it off, you'd be in the same boat. So that also is, is fixed. And if you are worried that your system isn't doing what it needs to do, you can go get products for free, like Cloudflare Warp. Now this will work on your phone, this will work on your, on your desktop. Just install that, it's free, and it's gonna give you a, a really significantly more security than any VPN ever did. And that's fantastic. So the important thing is, and, and then our computers, right, are completely different now than they were 20 years ago. We have passwords on them, they're hard to get into. A lot of websites we go to, and sometimes our computers have what's known as two-factor communication, it's where they're sending a code to your phone. So if even someone did get your password and all that, well, they gotta also get your phone and send a code to it, and like, like it's super hard to break in that way. All those things have been solved, and really, really well. So I can go without a VPN anywhere in the world, connect and get online, and I don't have any worries that, that I'm in some kind of danger because I'm online in public or anything like that. The world just isn't like that anymore. But VPN vendors, and especially a lot of YouTube influencers, are out there trying to kind of give this fear to get you to go out and buy those things because they get paid either to push it or every time someone buys one with their affiliate link or whatever, and there's just a lot of money in it, and it seems so reasonable, and it's so easy to convince people because, well, VPNs made sense in the past. They must make sense now. All oh, these, these travel people, they all use it. Well, if they use it, they know, right? No, they don't know. They have no idea. They're clueless. Half these people are entitled teenagers. Their parents gave them some money. They got bought a camera. They're out traveling. Great for them. I would do the same thing if the opportunity came up. They don't have any tech background. They don't have the history to realize why it was like that. They don't, they don't put the pieces together. They're not thinking about it. And why would they think about it? They're getting paid not to. They're literally being paid not to think critically about it and just tell you about this thing that yeah, they're getting the same sales pitch. Well, that sounds good. Don't I need antivirus? No, your computer already has antivirus. Oh, and it's better than anything they're selling you. Well, don't I need encryption to my... No, you already have that. It's better than anything they're trying to sell you. Oh, in fact... The one thing that could undermine all the security you already have is a VPN. Putting in a VPN will make some of the stuff you're doing actually less secure. So it's not a big deal. I'm not saying that those vendors are out working super hard to collect all your data through this weird mechanism, but they certainly could if they wanted to, and you are putting your, you're just making yourself a little bit more exposed and slowing down your computer by doing this. Everything's gonna be a little bit slower under normal circumstances and a little bit, just a little bit less secure. VPNs fundamentally are not there for your security and the VPN vendors and definitely the influencers are not out there to help you. They're out there to sell a product. Remember, you don't make money by telling people not to spend money. This is a fundamental problem with life, right? But anyone who's gonna give you real advice is going to have to be paid by you in order to step back and say, okay, here's the things you didn't think about because someone's always gonna pay them to say something that sounds good because the whole point is selling you something and you need to always think critically and be like, are they just trying to sell me something? Did I feel the need for this before? Am I really missing this huge need that, it, no, there's no need for a VPN. So at the end of the day, if you're traveling and you wanna be secure, there's things you need to do. Make sure you have a modern computer, keep your operating system up to date. All those people who say, oh, just stay back on Windows 10, cut them out of your lives. Don't be that person, right? There is no such thing as a reason to not update your computer in the real world. That is how you get hacked. That is how bad things happen. And if you get hacked under those circumstances, you were not hacked by some, uh, hack, you gave up your system, right? There, it, this is, I know there's a trend. I know that there's all these people who are lazy and don't wanna update your computer for you. They don't wanna deal with any problems that may come up. They're hoping someone else will have to deal with it. They they just, they're anti-technology and to, to alleviate their personal emotional reactions, they're gonna tell you not to keep your systems up to date. Listen, any person, any person who would tell you something like that is either a professional who knows what they're doing and they're being intentionally negligent, or they know nothing about how software is made and they're willing to give advice based on a complete and utter lack of understanding about how software works. I don't care how risky it feels like it is to update your system. From a security standpoint, there is no excuse for not updating your system. 
and there's no excuse for waiting on it. And you're going to say, I know, but I know this IT guy and he says, and I'll tell you right now, I'll go face to face with him. If he said that, I don't trust he's an IT guy. You can't convince me that he's actually doing his job or knows what IT is. He may be an IT guy who's scamming you. He may be an IT guy who's so incompetent that he can't really make a claim to being an IT. There's a lot of things that he is not doing what IT means, which is looking out for your interest and representing your needs in a technology setting. No qualified IT person would say that, right? So you could be an unqualified person who claims to work in the IT space, whatever, right? It's like being a car mechanic and saying, you can just put sugar in the gas tank, that's fine, right? You can't be a qualified mechanic and think sugar can go into a combustion engine, right? You can't, there's just, there's just limits. And this is one of those things. Fundamental knowledge of what you're doing in IT requires that you know you gotta keep things up to date. Are there very, 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 very specific circumstances where you know a very specific, specific update needs to be avoided? Yes, that can happen, but it's not a general case. When you say, do you keep your things up to date? Yes, that's what you need to do. So your very first rule of security, keep your things up to date, keep a strong password. Do not forget your passwords. Do not treat passwords as something you throw away. I had this happen in the last 30 minutes, helping someone with a system. I know they just created this password recently. They're like, oh, I, I don't remember. I don't know what account I made. Are you serious? This had credit cards on it. What is wrong with you? This is important. If someone makes you make a password, that means you're at a moment where it's really important in your life. Stop and engage your brain. Don't sleep through password creation. Basics, basics, basics. You don't make that many, right? Use, find a good one. Use it more than once if you have to. Get a password manager if you have to, but don't just blow off the things that actually secure you. All those, and this is the thing that's crazy. Well, I want a VPN for security, but I will completely undermine that VPN by not knowing my passwords, by not keeping my system up to date. That VPN's useless if your system's not up to date. Like, this is the bottom line. Everything fails when your system's not up to date. So, up-to-date systems good passwords. Don't share your passwords. Uh, don't run random software. Anyone who gives you security software, get, cut them out of your lives and cut that software out of your life. Do not install security software. That is not a thing that security people do. Uh, make sure that um, when you're online, you're going to secure websites, HTTPS. Don't bypass that. Look for the little green lock. Use real business email if that's what you need to do. That's things like Gmail or Office 365, Zoho, there's, you know, <laughs> Nika Mail. Uh, and uh, make sure that if you really, so one of the things, this is one of the ways that you can bypass all that stuff, including the VPN. If you start going to Google and searching for websites instead of going to the website, not only do you set yourself up for a little bit of a security concern, because what if you Google for something wrong? What if you mistype it? Or what if someone has paid Google to give you a result that is not the thing you thought you were looking for first? You are very susceptible to being tricked that way or just making a mistake, uh, but also Google can track all that. So there's vendors who are able to track if you search, but if you just go to a website like your bank, if you search on your bank, someone knows you went to the bank and, and all those protections go out the window once you do that. Uh, but if you go directly to your bank, then you're secure end to end. So there's reasons why you don't just search on things. But of course, the search vendors want to convince you it's easier to search. Just search will give you the right results. And normally they do, but they're also collecting. They know every time you go to a website because of that. If you don't do that, they don't have that right to know. That's how Google gets all that information about you. You're volunteering it. And not that that's wrong and not that Google's bad, but that's a bunch of exposure you don't need. Keep yourself secure, basic things. But that's really about it. Don't turn off your antivirus. Never remove your antivirus. Do not remove the firewall. All those big, scary, like these are the things that secure you words. Don't I need antivirus? Don't I need a firewall? Sure you do, but they're always included when you need them. You never need to add them. No legitimate third party is gonna come along and sell that to you. Anybody who's selling that stuff, run away. Run away from the people selling security. That's not how security works. One of the best quotes I ever got from someone in the IT industry. Security is not something you buy. Security is something you do. And one of the most insecure things you can do, this is where I start, that was the quote. One of the most insecure things you can do is try to buy security because it means you're admitting to yourself and everyone else that you're not actually going to be secure and you're just going to pretend. And anyone that you make that agreement with, for example, someone you're buying security from, they are agreeing that we're just going to pretend to be secure and they can do anything they want because you've made a social contract not to be secure and they you don't have to trust them. They don't need to be trustworthy because you've agreed to a non-trusting system. If you trust them, you would have expected them to say, don't do anything because you've already got a secure system. Just keep it up to date. Make sure you have a good password. You'll be good. 
right? Keep it simple. And of course, anything you have important, make sure there's backups. Always have backups that are completely disconnected. If it's not disconnected, it's not actually a backup, that's a copy. You want a backup. Send it out to the cloud somewhere, put it on a drive, disconnect it from your computer, whatever you want to do. But a, a real backup is not somewhere on your computer, it's somewhere else. All right, I know that was a lot, but it's important stuff. Keep yourself safe. But do you need a VPN for security? No, it has no security functionality for you. It may actually undermine your security. Might you want a VPN for other reasons, for entertainment or whatever, to pretend you're working from a different site, to fool your office? Sure, all those are legit. If that's why you have it, absolutely. Plenty of decent VPN vendors out there, right? I use Surfshark, but I don't get paid to sell. I'm not gonna give you an affiliate link, but I use them, they're okay. Uh, NordVPN seems okay. There's a whole bunch. You can go see all the influencers who are out there selling this stuff. They mostly work, right, uh, for that stuff. They're just not security. Just, just do it for honest reasons and then you know, then you're good. So I promise, okay, so before we go on to the technical part of the discussion, uh, for those few people who want to hang out at the end, I just want to say, questions, comments, anything, get down there. That is how we come up with things that we need to know for the show. So this happens to be an area of expertise for me. I advise very large companies on this. I, I you know, give advice to the Fortune 10 about this specific kind of stuff. So I'm brought in on Wall Street to talk about this stuff. So, so this is an area I know, um, but I talk about Nicaragua and travel. Just get down there in the comments and let me know what you think and, and ask your questions about whatever. Um, and uh, if you'd like to support the channel, of course, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That's like Patreon and makes this show possible for me to put on on beautiful days. I actually recorded four episodes today because I need to catch up. I'm traveling soon, so sorry that I'm rushing a little bit, but this beautiful sunset I'm gonna show right here behind me. My gosh, it's a beautiful day out here in Carlos Canales. Nicaragua, I'm enjoying being outside. It's really pleasant. It's very fresh, good air coming by, and it's just a quiet little bit in the countryside as people walk by. And uh, uh, love being able to make this show. Want to be able to do more things for you. We've had such good feedback this last week. It's just been a great week on the show. I feel like a lot's going on. Uh, share on social media. Watch an extra episode at the end. Tell your friends and family about the show. And now, technically, okay, VPNs, what do they actually do? What is the mechanism that makes all this stuff happen? And why is it so confusing? So what a VPN is, is first of all, it stands for virtual private tunnel. And the idea is that there was a time period where people would actually have a wire. Like, let's say uh, I have a house, you have a house, and we want to have private communications between us. Before the internet, we would literally have a copper wire run from my house to your house, potentially hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away, and we would communicate really slowly with each other. That's how we could play Doom online before there was online, right? It was cool technology in like the 80s and early 90s. Eventually we got the internet and there were just easier ways to connect, but then we were used to the security of having a private network, this private piece of copper that ran from my house to your house. Well, obviously, it's not 100% secure, nothing is, but it was quite annoying to try to hack into someone's private copper line. You'd have to go down the street, look at the power lines and be like, oh, does this power line, I hope you can see the one that's here, does this power line carry that data? Like, I don't know. And, and you know, maybe right in front of my house, you know that it does, but down the street, when do, where does the wire go? It's really hard to trace, right? So it gave a fair amount of security. It was not perfect, but it was a very reasonable amount of security, especially at the time. The tech was much, much less. If you tried that today, people would hack it lickety split. Uh, so, so they came out in the late 90s and said, okay, well, we got the internet now and we don't want to run private copper between every single person in the world. This doesn't work. How do we start to get some of that functionality back while using the internet? And the idea was this technology called a VPN, virtual private network, that using it would replicate or exceed and it didn't take too long before it exceeded the security equivalent of using that copper line. And if you were to compare modern VPNs today to those old copper lines, they are orders of magnitude safer, literally thousands of times harder to hack into than it was to sniff the lines in the old days. So they've, they've come a long way in that regards. But that entire concept of hooking my house to your house and just letting both houses be wide open to each other is a fundamentally insecure concept. So the thing that VPNs were trying to replicate wasn't actually that great of an idea in the first place, but it had some important technical components to it. So the way that it works is it took existing communications and it encapsulated all of that communication, I'm not gonna go into deep detail, in, in an encrypted wrapper as it's called. And so everything that goes through this, we, we call it a tunnel, 
all of the things flowing through the tunnel are encrypted and very, very, very hard to break into. Like effect effectively you can't, right? Just assume you can't break into the tunnel, it's that hard. So that's great. So I can make a tunnel from here to somewhere else and wow, that's super secure. Well, that sounds great. We created the secure tunnel. But the problems are that, of course, I'm going to create the tunnel from me to a VPN vendor, and then they have to do something with the communications not in a VPN on the other end, because they don't have VPNs everywhere. Oh, that kind of breaks the whole theory. Yeah, it totally breaks everything. It doesn't make any sense. But so creating this tunnel, the original theory was that we would make a big tunnel that goes from my house to your house, and every single thing in my house can see every single thing in your house wide open. It's like we're connected via a giant bay window with just, you know, a tube going between. So we can yell to each other, whatever. Everything goes back and forth. That's fundamentally insecure. If I want to steal something from your house, I just sneak through the tunnel, steal the thing, take it back. If I'm carrying COVID and I go through the, and you catch it, well, you can catch it because it's like wide open. Like there's all these ways that bad things can happen when you have a big thing like that. So you can imagine VPNs were a big tunnel for virus to go down, for example. VPNs are the number one way that viruses in the modern world for the last like 20 years move between companies because one company connects to another and it's like, we're going to be secure and use a VPN and a whole bunch of people who have no idea what they're doing, a prove it and suddenly two companies are wide open to each other and one is stealing data from the other the other is infecting the other with antivirus and everyone's like how could this happen as if they didn't just design that intentionally to happen like come on all right so vpns if you connect to someone with a vpn you're doing something fundamentally really insecure vpns importantly because in the modern world we have a thing called a firewall and everyone's got them every computer built in the last 15 years has a firewall built in right not to mention your hardware firewall in your house. That's extra. And you do need both. Always no exceptions. But your computer has its own firewall. And that means that it's not open to the outside world by default. Everything's blocked off until you attach to it with a VPN. A VPN just punches a hole right through the firewall. That's its function under normal circumstances. So suddenly what was protected is now open, not to the whole world, but it's open to somewhere. And that's a lot less secure than open to nowhere. So the VPN is a bypass to a firewall in its normal usage. That's its fundamental thing today. It used to be long ago a way to move communications from one place to another that weren't designed to move that way. So it had this extra functionality in the early days. That doesn't really exist anymore, not in any meaningful way. But what it does today is it defeats firewalls. So that's important. You know how important a firewall is. Suddenly does defeating your firewall sound like a smart way to be secure? Of course not. So VPNs fundamentally introduce huge amounts of risk. The way that really cool technology, like the way we use SSL certificates on HTTPS websites, yes, they're using a VPN, but what they're doing is they're making a very special type of VPN that recognizes web traffic and isolates itself to only web traffic and goes directly from your web browser, not just your computer, but your web browser, directly to the web server that you're talking to and allows them to talk in a very, very isolated way for just that traffic. You can't pass a virus through that unless you're doing like a download or something something because it's not HTTP traffic. And so it, it's watching for those things and it's very limited. So it's like a partial VPN, but it's a full VPN technology just implemented in a much more secure way. And there's, they're equal VPNs. One is not more VPN than the other. One is just traditional, what we mean when we say VPN and just say it that way. The other is a VPN used in such a special way that most people just don't realize it's a VPN at all. So they're very confused, but I have a video on my Sam IT channel talking about how that is also a VPN and it helps explain when you know those kinds of things are VPNs, then you can identify them in lots of other places and you can learn how they react and know what their security is and why they work. And it explains a lot of things. There's so many things that people are confused about. If you know how they work and those really like, oh, that's a VPN, we just don't call it that. Bam, now I know everything, right? It's like, it's that simple. So that's how they protect against that. They don't open up everything on one side to everything on the other. They open up as very isolated stuff. It's more like running a straw from my house to your house and having someone who's watching what comes through the straw going, yes, yes, nope, block it. Yes, 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 right? And making sure they're only getting, it's not like an antivirus where it really looks at everything and knows exactly what it is, but it makes sure it's the right kind of thing coming from the right place, going to the right place. So it does an awful lot of good. It's so, so secure compared to what a regular VPN is. So that's why VPNs are dangerous. They just expose all kinds of things combined with the uh, the concept that the VPNs did of, well, you're not going to connect to the person you're, you're sending the message to. You're going to connect to a third party, trust the third party, and then let them communicate insecurely. Do the exact thing that they just protected you from doing. They're going to do it, right? And, and it truly was better than you doing it 
but only so much. It's still at the bottom line doing something very, very insecure just somewhere else. So that's it's just a bad idea. So all that's been solved. Um, if you if you really want to dig into VPNs and security and how all this stuff works, if you're really interested in IT and all that, I have another channel called Sam IT. It's a picture of me. It's a much older channel than this. Uh, it's not as popular, but also I haven't done that much recently. I'm going to get back to that, I hope, really soon. Definitely go check that out. It, you can deep dive into anything and definitely ask questions there or ask questions here for me on there. Uh, if there's topics you want me to cover, I'm happy to. I can cover anything in IT, anything in software engineering. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Buy that coffee. Do all the stuff. Watch another video at the end of this, and I will see all of you tomorrow. All right, popping up on the screen, four videos. Take a pick, any one. Just go watch it. They're normally old episodes. Sometimes it's like what YouTube thinks you're going to like, but any one of them is going to help out my show just by you clicking on it. That's all you got to do. Just support the show. Click right now. Go, go.